Well, hey everybody, I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside and welcome to the first in the Back Porch Herbal Series uh, called Nervous System Herbs. I'm gonna get some lemon balm out here. I forgot it, I've done this once before in my, uh, again, my, my, my video just stopped on me, so it's like, okay, <laughs> we'll try this again. Uh, I'm going to do a little disclaimer here first, though, before we get started on this. Um, the, this information is for educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose any condition or prescribe any treatment. Please consult your medical herbal professional for further advice regarding the use of herbs. Let me get this a little bit better there. Uh, particularly if you're already taking prescribed medications to avoid any unnecessary or harmful interactions. Please seek treatment. Uh, from a medical professional should symptoms occur that don't resolve quickly on their own. And if you're pregnant or wanting to become pregnant, <clears throat> please consult your medical or herbal professional before using any herbs at all. Um, herbs are medicine. I don't know what else to say. That's why there's herbalism. Anyway, uh, we're going to look at some nervous system herbs this first go around. Um, their herbs are classified into different categories, urinary, respiratory, liver, you know, all of that cardiac, uh, female, male, reproductive, um, all of that. So um, we're going to ultimately in the series look at all of these. Uh, but for today, let's look at skullcap, lemon balm, hops, oat seed and straw and chamomile. And of course, my all time favorite, motherwort. So, especially during the crone phase of life, um, these are, are and, and, and nervous system herbs can be classified in, into three categories. Tonics that feed, tone, re rehabilitate, and strengthen the nervous system. Sedatives, both uh, relaxant and stimulatory, are actually, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, we're just going to talk about the relaxants here today, though. They, stim they relax the nervous system and help reduce pain, ease tension, help with sleep. Um, they're also antispasmodic, uh, and they help with muscle cramp cramping and spasms. And then you have the demulsants, which is what we're going to start with first, which heal and soothe irritated or inflamed nerve endings. And so for the first, for that first uh, grouping, we're going to look at uh, uh, Avena sativa or oat seed and oat straw. Now this is what the oat straw looks like. This is just the stalks all ground up, which is tough to do. And now I just take scissors and cut them up because it just overworks my Vitamix. So I don't have anything that can grind that up. And I've looked, I can't find anything that's suitable that will actually do that. I have a, a KitchenAid that has attachments. It won't do it either. So now I just cut them up. This, oh, oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. That's chamomile. And then we have oat seed here. And I was going to get out a couple of examples of what not to do in harvest and what to do. <laughs> anyway. So basically, it's rich in silicic acid, mucin, calcium. It's a nerve tonic, uh, antidepressant, a nutritive, a demulcent. It's a vulnerary, which means wound healing. So David, that's from David Hoffman's Holistic Herbal, uh, saying that oats is one of the best remedies for feeding the nervous system, especially when under stress. It's considered a specific in cases of nervous stability and exhaustion. When associated with depression, it can be used with most other er nervines, both relaxant and stimulatory to, uh, well, I guess in terms of, of stimulatory ner nervines, to strengthen the whole of the nervous system. It's also used in general debility. Um, if you're going to grow your own, which I do, you want to harvest when it looks like this instead of like this. This one got away from me. <laughs> when they're like this, when they're early on in the in the in the growth, you're going to squeeze them and it's going to get a little wet. It's supposedly a milky substance. I've yet to see it cloudy, but whatever. Anyway, <laughs> that's where, when you want to harvest it though, uh, you want to, when it's still just a closed up green seed. Um, and you don't, and you want to make sure when you dry them, leave them for like a month in the dark, you know, on something. Uh, to, I use a, a, a bamboo mat and, and leave it there uh, for you yeah, at least that long, because if you jar up oat seed before it's done drying, and it's sometimes it's hard to tell, then you open the jar later and the smell is so bad, you, it'll clear a room, uh, and you can't use it, right? <clears throat> but anyway, um, the, they're mucilaginous and they, they, they both coat and soothe the nerve, soothe the nerve endings and the stalks contain silica and calcium. So I recommend using them both. Uh, in tea blends, but if not, you know, just at least use the seed. Now, moving on to, and that's a, that's an example of a demulcent uh, herb. 
Now here we have, oh yeah, you, you just run your hands through it and it's, it's just lemony. There's your lemon balm that's all dried and, and crushed up there. Um, and it's a lovely herb that is carminative, uh, which stimulates digestion, calms gas, antispasmodic, antidepressive, diaphoretic, which means it stimulates the kidneys to promote sweating, and hypotensive. Um, and, and this is from David Hoffman's uh, Holistic Herbal, some of this stuff here. Uh, I like him real well. I've got several of his books. Uh, <clears throat> great author, great herbalist. Um, a member of the mint family, lemon balm leaves smell like lemon. And its carminative properties relieve gas pains and spasms, and its essential oils are what relieve, relieve nervous tension. It's been a staple in my herb garden forever, and if I let it go to seed, which I do, you know, then it's everywhere, But which is great. I don't care. Lemon balm can come up wherever lemon balm wants to come up. It's wonderful. I actually have a pot growing inside under lights for the, for the winter, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, chamomile's the next one. I've got some drying on a little... Uh, uh, bamboo plate. Actually, it's a paper plate holder. Um, I've been really lucky. My last couple of years, my, my chamomile has been real prolific. It tends to want to die out on me, and I don't know why, probably because of where I live, but we live on the high desert. But Anthemus nobile chamomile is called. Uh, this delicate herb contains volatile oils, mucilage, and is antispasmodic, carminative, anti-inflammatory, analgesics, antiseptic, and it's a vulnerary. And that's from Holistic Herbal. Um, chamomile flowers are used in teas for anxiety, indigestion, and insomnia. Its delicate flowers contain azaline and are gathered throughout the summer and should be dried with care, as with all herbs, really, away from the light, but particularly any flowers you want to do that with to preserve the volatile oils in there. Uh, chamomile, as much as you can, you know, as they dry. Chamomile is also safe for children and can be helpful with colic which, you know, in the crone years, I think we all have a little colic. Hops, humulus, lupulus, it's a sedative. We all know it because it goes into making beer. Let's get a better one here. But there's your hop strobel. The flowers are called strobels. Now, I, we don't make beer with it. I use it for tinctures and for tea blends, but uh, it's got lupulin, uh, bitters, uh, and that's important for digestion, bitters are. Resin, tannin, and volatile oils. It's considered to be astringent and antiseptic, as well as a hypnotic and a sedative. That's from David Hoffman's Holistic Herbal. Uh, it, it treats both insomnia and anxiety, and its bitter aspects makes hops a wonderful addition to any digestive tea you want to, tea blend you might want to, uh, uh, you know, do like peppermint or spearmint or whatever, and that actually improves the taste of, of, of hops. Anytime you have a bitter herb, you, you know, it's going to, not taste as good, but that's okay. You know, nettle is a bitter herb and it's probably one of the best along with dandelion that we have. Um, but anyway, I, I usually tincture hops, but I do leave enough dried to add to tea blends throughout the year. Um, they like to climb, um, move the, uh, each year in the spring. You're gonna wanna, as you start to see them come up off the line, you're gonna wanna dig them and move them in. You'll be cutting the, the rhizome, they, they make rhizomes. And then the plants come up from there. As long as you have enough of a, of a, of a you know, tail on it, then just cut it and just put it in line on your fence line and you'll have hops everywhere, all up and down the fence line. Uh, skull cap, <clears throat> Scolateria lateriflora, lateriflora, there we go. Uh, it makes little tiny blue flowers. Um, it's just gorgeous. I have some growing in a, in a greenhouse, in a bed in a greenhouse. Um, <clears throat> it's a sedative, uh, uh, nervine or, or nervous system herb. Now, Matthew Wood indicates in the Earthwise Herbal, a complete guide to new world medicinal plants, that skullcap is indicated for nervous fear, restlessness, irritability, and anticipation. And it's also useful for flatulence and menstrual, plan menstrual pain. It may also be effective for fever and can be used as a restorative for a depleted nerve system, nervous system. It's a mint family plant. It's great for headaches and nervous tension. It can be used alone or in a tea blend. Uh, it can also be tinctured. Um, it's one of the ones I actually prefer in tincture form. Um, that way you can have a basic tea and then just add some drops of this and that. You know, like four or five drops of skull cap, a couple drops of something else, a couple drops of something else. And you know, any of these can be tinctured, by the way. <clears throat> now, motherwort, 
Oh, where is my motherwort? Is this it here? Yes. No. No, that's that. That's Here's the motherwort. Yeah, it has kind of an earthy smell to it. Um, and when you when you pick it, you might want to use gloves or something because it's kind of sticky, stickery, and it can you know kind of, kind of give you a contact allergy if you're sensitive. Um, but this is what it looks like when it's ground up. Um, it contains alkaloids, volatile oils. Again, it's a it's a bitter, it's bitter glycosides in it, tannins. <clears throat> it's an amazing female reproductive herb, especially during the crone years for hot flashes, all of that. It's useful for cardiovascular and circulatory issues as well. So sometimes, you know, when you're in your crone years, you might get some heart palpitations between that this motherwort and, and hawthorn, you know, a little motherwort tea with some hawthorn tincture in it. There you go. Uh, Culpepper states, Venus owns the herb and it's under Leo. There is no better herb to take melancholy vapors from the heart, to strengthen it and make a merry, cheerful, blithe soul than this herb. It may be kept in a syrup or conserve, therefore the Latins call it cardiaca. Uh, besides, it makes women joyful mothers of children and settles their wombs as they should be. Therefore, we call it motherwort. It is held to be of much use for the tremblings of the heart, the faintings and the swoonings from whence it took the name cardiaca. And that's from Culpepper's Complete Herbal. That's from a long time ago, so hence the interesting language there. I love that book. I really do. It's fun. So yeah, motherwort's my go-to herb these days, either in tea or tincture form to help calm everything. <laughs> but because of its bitter taste, I add other soothing and tasty herbs to the tea blend, such as oats or oat straw to sort of neutralize it. Lemon balm is another one. Spearmint, any of the mints are, work well. Um, did I go over all of it? Did I get them all? I think I did. Oh my goodness. So anyway, any of these herbs can be used alone uh, or as a tea blend. Now, a quick note about parts, because you're going to see down below, if you go to the blog, this is all written up and it's there right now. It posted this morning about 8 o'clock, I think I posted it. So it's there and you can go through and use it as a reference if you like. And down at the bottom, there's going to be three recipes that you can have um, and use if you want to. Um, again be aware of the disclaimer it's there as well um, but I put it in terms of parts now parts can be anything they can just be in my case I use healthy pinches as parts okay and I'm gonna do that here uh, we'll go down to it uh, <clears throat> and we'll we'll make one of these here and I'll show you what it looks like now you can either do this <clears throat> in a cup <coughs> excuse me <coughs> <clears throat> it's dry in the house this morning. Uh, you can either do this in a cup with, you know, I like to use one of those hanging uh, uh, tea infusers that sits on the top of the cup and the infuser part, the basket hangs down inside the water. And, uh, and I just put it in there and then I cover it with some foil. Or you could do it in a mason jar if you want to make more or a French press. If I'm doing the same tea for both me and my husband, I'll do it in a French press. And then when it's done, I just push the plunger down. Uh, and that makes actually that actually will make two travel size mugs of tea. The French press will, uh, because that's how we drink our tea. We drink them in travel size mugs, so it's like twelve ounces of tea every day. Uh, but anyway, if you're going to do that, either way, steep your tea from uh, anywhere from fifteen minutes to twenty minutes or longer if you want to in the quart size. Um, I have I've I've cro crocheted a tea cozy around the French press, so to kind of keep the, the warmth in there, because uh, I do do it sometimes for a half hour. Um, but you can play around with the herbs uh, that we've talked about here, um, you know, as much as you want to, uh, or find some others. Uh, paying attention again to the uh, medicinal properties and the actions, the constituents, the properties, the actions, all of that, to make sure that you're, you know, you're getting the right one for, for what uh, you're doing. Um, but, but, a simple one would be using two parts skullcap to one part lemon balm and chamomile. Uh, another one might be one part motherwort, one part hops and two parts lemon balm. Lemon balm to sort of, you know, lemony up the, the bitterness of the hops and the motherwort. Uh, and then the one we're going to do right now is two parts oats, uh, seed and or straw, preferably both. So I'll do one part straw and one part seed and do it that way. One part chamomile, one part 
uh, skull cap and one part motherwort. So let's go ahead and in the, let's see, I'm going to need this one, skull cap, chamomile, and where's the motherwort? Here's the motherwort. Okay. So we're going to go one part. I'll do it. I'll do it here. Let me move my notes here so I can see what I'm doing. So one part of the straw, one part of the seed, uh, that gives us, that gives us two parts. Uh, let's see, one part chamomile. I'm just going to take pretty much all of it there. Um, and for whatever reason, I still have stems on here. Or that's okay. You can leave them on. Normally I try to clean all the stems off of it though. Um, but it's still drying. So, uh, although it looks like it's probably done. Oh, this is smelling good. Uh, one part skull cap. And then one part motherwort. See, and then you have basically a nice uh, blended tea. You just sort of blend it all together. I need to move this out of the way because I cannot see what I'm doing. We'll just get rid of that over there. But basically now you have a nice tea. You can just kind of mush up a little bit. And, <clears throat> you know... You could actually probably have enough for two cups here if you're if you're going to do two cups and just divide it into two and put it into your 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 tea infuser whatever you use like I said I use a a hanging one and you've got enough for two two cups of tea there um, otherwise if you just want to use the whole thing you could use the whole thing um, but it looks like it's an awful lot there you could probably do two cups out of that but that would make a really nice uh, nervous system uh, tea that's 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 not only uh, demulcent, it's sedative, it's relaxing, um, it's uh, uh, a tonic, and so it it just basically calms everything down, which is very nice to do, especially right now as you know we're worried and all of that about what's going to happen here. Um, but again. Uh, Leave it to steep for, you know, if you're in a cup, at least 15 minutes. You know, 20 to 30 if, if, if you're doing it in a French press or a, uh, uh, a, a quart mason jar. Quart mason jars work great. Um, you just put the lid on it and there you go. Um, and, uh, you know, so the next time you're, you're feeling stressed or nervous, get creative and make a cup of tea. Um, lots of books are out there. Uh, books by Rosemary Gladstar, anything by her. Um, she was actually, I, my, my uh, certificate in herbalism is actually from Sage Mountain, from uh, her place, and uh, uh, it's a great course to take. Um, the Herbal Academy is another one you can, you can take some courses from. I'm actually an affiliate for the Herbal Academy, and I guess next month they're going to have some courses out that, that they're going to have for the holiday season, and so look for that. I'll be posting information about that as well. Um, if you ever click on a link and, and in the, and in the blog post, you're going to find some of the herbs or all of the herbs are linked. Um, they link to Amazon. I'm also an Amazon affiliate. If you click on any of those and purchase anything, I get a, I get a, a small commission from the sale. So, um, thank you so much in advance. If you do that, I appreciate that. I do that to just sort of defray some of my blog costs. I mean, it costs money to run a blog. I don't know. I don't know what to say. It does. So. And you don't realize it, you know, when you start out on Blogger, but then when you move over to WordPress and you start realizing, oh, I need this and oh, I need that and that looks cool and oh, that would make it better. Well, then all of a sudden, you know, you're spending a little bit of money there. And it's not huge, but but at least this helps, you know, doing some affiliate marketing helps with that. And so that's why you see a few ads over there on the blog. Not a whole lot, but but they're there. And some of them are intentionally put and some of them get put there by Google, but uh but any event, um, I guess that's it. I'm not sure which one I'll do next. Probably the respiratory herbs. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to do the liver ones first. Liver alternatives are the best herbs in the world. Nettle, dandelion, yellow dock, root, all of that stuff. It, it flushes the system of toxins. 
when you're dealing with allergies now, if you have allergies in the spring, you want to start now herbally to get your body flushed enough because look what we do during the winter. We eat crappy stuff, right? Well, you know, because we're inside and so we're not as healthy as we might be otherwise be unless we take steps to be that way. And so you want to keep things flushing. Uh, and that's the beginning aspect of getting yourself ready for allergy season. So this would actually be the best time to talk about that. So next week, that's what we'll do on Wednesday. We'll, we'll do this and we'll uh, talk about the liver alternative herbs. So, okay, I guess that's it. For the first time at a, at a back porch herbal, that's pretty cool. I, I love working with tea blends. I love doing tinctures, but I really love doing tea blends. It's just fun to, I have one for hot flashes. I call it hot flash tea and anyway. A lot of that stuff's over on the blog, but if not, um, some of it's in Witch Notes, some of it's in Confessions of a Back Porch Herbalist, um, but at any event, check those out if you want to. Those are some books I've written among, I think I've written, what have I written, seven or eight now, I think. Most of them are on witchcraft, but witchcraft-related stuff or esoteric kinds of things, but some of it includes herbs, so anyway, I can't help myself, so... Thanks so much for watching, and we'll talk again next Wednesday. Look tomorrow for uh, Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune. I'm doing those now on Monday and Thursday instead of Monday through Thursday. Monday and Thursday. I do the Esoteric Influences for the week on Sunday, so check that out. Those videos are on the side panel of the blog, as is this. I'm going to add this one there, the Back Porch Herbal ones. It'll be a separate one. There's also one called Magical Musings, which I talk about different things, and that's new as well. So kind of some shift this year into something different not so much you know the same stuff all the time i want to mix it up a little bit and do a little more herbal stuff so look for that this year this coming year on the blog over at stepping aside links will be below the video uh, of anything you're interested in including a link to the the blog post itself so you don't have to go scrolling around to find it or anything so anyhow thanks for watching and we'll talk again soon be good to yourself be good to one another and blessed be